Hey, hi, guys. Um, it's me, P.S. Right, and uh, as promised, I'm going to start doing a series of videos about things that I have researched. Okay, um, so check it out. I'm writing a book called Alligators in Shades of Green. Okay, so I got kitties. <laughs> want to see a kitty? Look, kitties. Look, you want one? They're free. Okay, so it got to a point in the book when um, my hero is uh, being chased by an alligator. Part of the part of the the scenario calls for the hero to be smart enough to, to figure out using his veterinary knowledge uh, why the alligator can't get him or how he can escape from the alligator. Um, so I was thinking to myself, well, how how is he going to how is he going to escape? the alligator that's chasing. Alligators are actually very fast. They're faster than humans are. Even though they have those little stumpy looking little legs, they're actually very fast, both in and out of the water. They're faster in the water, of course, than they are out of the water. Uh, now, if we were going for a long race, then the humans would, would beat the alligator. But if you're in the alligator's uh, domain in their territory, and one is, is chasing you, and you have a very short period of time to get away because you're close to it, you're not gonna be able to get away in most cases just by by outrunning it um, you know you need a little bit of a, a little bit of a head start so in this case he has to use his veterinary knowledge to figure out how to very very quickly <laughs> escape the alligator and of course I you know I thought about all the all the tropes that people already have used you know the ideal that well if you move from side to side right if you zigzag and I think even Mythbusters covered this one I think they I think they did. Um, so the ideal being that if it, that alligators aren't particularly good at going back and forth as fast as you are because they're long and, and uh, slow to react or something, I guess is the ideal. They're actually not. <laughs> they're not particularly slow to react. They're pretty quick. Um, the, the running zigzag does help, but probably not enough in and of itself in this occasion. And then the other question is, well, well why would running zigzag help? Uh, if you look at how an alligator's made, they're, they're basically, they're kind of like a snake with legs. I mean, they're, they're, they're long, um, very flexible. Uh, they're made for moving along the ground. <laughs> uh, we may be more nimble, but we're also, we also have a different body configuration. So it doesn't really make a lot of sense to me. And I needed to understand that a little better before I could write this scene in a way that was believable. Now, <laughs> I could have just made some stuff up or I could have just gone with a, well, he ran in a zigzag pattern, ta-da. <laughs> and, and I'm sure that would work. In fact, I'm, I'm positive it would work. And in all likelihood, I won't explain any of this in the actual book, but in order to understand how the scene works in such a way that anyone who knows anything about alligators would read it and not immediately be tipped off that I know nothing about alligators. I needed to understand a little bit better about how alligators move and walk and run and why, why they do these things. So I, I got a whole bunch of videos and some articles and I started reading. There was one video that I got on YouTube and it was called Science on Saturday, the Evolution of Birds. I'll put the link in, in on the blog post so you can uh, check that out if you want to. You can look it up here on YouTube. That's where I found it. Uh, uh, it's a rather long uh, lecture by, a, I believe he's a zoologist that specializes in birds. Not positive, don't quote me on that. Um, so I was watching this video and he mentioned this thing that I thought he, I thought he said, Carta, cardio femoris but actually what he said was cardo femoralis the femur and of course the caudal bone um, so what this is is a really long very strong muscle that goes from the caudal bone or the the tailbone uh, literally in this case tail not not just the end of his spine uh, like us humans, but in, in, obviously alligators have these really chunky long tails and they have this muscle that runs from a point of, in their tail all the way to their femur and there's actually a little bump on the femur where this muscle attaches. What caught my eye, what caught my ear I guess you could say because he was talking, I wasn't really 
watching him, uh, was that he said, well, this is why alligators swish their tails when they walk. And I thought, that's unusual. Um, okay, I'll bite. Why? Okay, so alligators swish when they walk. If you've never, if you've ever watched an alligator, like watch a video of them, there's hundreds of them online. It's pretty easy to pull up. You'll notice that when they walk, they don't walk just straight, straight ahead. Um, they don't, they don't walk like straight. They walk uh, sort of like this, right? They swish their behinds, they swish their hips. And uh, the reason for that is that they are actually, they're just sort of swishing their tail. They're moving their tail. So as they tail pulls back and then their leg pulls back and then their tail goes the other way and then the other leg moves and that's kind of a, an interesting sort of walk that they have going on and the reason for that is this uh, caudofemoralis caudo uh, caudo longus apparently is, is its proper name um, and all alligators have it in fact most reptiles have all all reptiles have it. The alligators have a really big chunky one and so I said okay that's that's an interesting little factoid. Maybe that helps to explain why um, running zigzag from an alligator makes it difficult for the alligator to follow as well because uh, unlike humans they have this very large uh, caudo femoralis longus muscle uh, that is required in order to pull their leg back uh, sort of like having a, a rubber band attached to the tail, right? And as they, as they swish the tail to one side, that rubber band gets taut and it pulls the leg back a little. And then it swishes the other side and allows the leg to go forward. Um, and humans, of course, don't walk that way. So I thought, well, that, that could explain it. And that could allow my hero a means of escape. Uh, I don't know if I want to have him talking about a caudo femoralis longus muscle uh, in the midst of an exciting action scene, but it could certainly go a long way toward explaining it. And it's, it is something that a veterinarian might know that you or I may not. I mean, I didn't know before I looked it up. So I, I actually did a little bit more research. I, I went to a couple of uh, papers on the matter. They were written in a very difficult to understand medical terminology, a lot of lingo. Um, but I also found a really great blog post by a fellow, uh, uh, an American biologist who uh, is, is working in the UK right now at the, uh, at the Royal College, uh, uh, Royal Veterinary College. And so he had some additional pictures and explained a bit more. It was a little bit difficult to understand, but not as difficult as the actual um, uh, academic papers. So it was a nice sort of step between, between just a, a YouTube video and and an academic paper and it kind of told me some additional information uh, one of the interesting things about it is that birds also have this muscle like alligators do and and all reptiles do but in birds it's reduced and the little bump on the leg to which the muscle attaches is smaller i just had a kitty run in front of me so the birds have these little nobules, uh, the reptiles have big nobules, uh, and humans don't have nobules. Hmm. And, and we don't have the caudo femoralis longus muscle. Uh, so humans don't have this. Birds do, but smaller. Reptiles have them, and they're massive. Excuse me. Uh, birds and crocodiles are both related to dinosaur. In fact, uh, a lot of people say that d birds are dinosaurs. They're just, they're what uh, a particular type of dinosaur, uh, you know, became, there were two types of dinosaurs, the saurian dinosaurs, the non-saurian dinosaurs, blah, 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 blah. Too much information to put into this little video, but that's, it's an interesting connection there between alligators that have been around for a few million years and birds, which of course evolved from dinosaur ancestors and one of the things that they that they pointed out was that um dinosaurs have like alligators have really large chunky tails and a lot of alligator 
or excuse, a lot of dinosaur fossils have sh been shown to have that little nodule on their leg bone. So they might also have walked by sort of swishing their tail from side to side. Whereas most birds don't really do that that much. They do it a little, not as much. And then of course mammals don't do it at all. And it also looks like some, some dinosaurs had this muzzle and some did not. Is that, do, is that another distinction between the avian dinosaurs and the non-avian dinosaurs? Or is that a distinction within the avian dinosaur line where earlier avian dinosaurs would have had it and later avian dinosaurs had smaller ones? So this is another little sort of um, little side avenue that we can we can follow down and get more information that will help color the book. So that's what I found out today in my research. You can see that that book research can take you to interesting places. It can open up new questions. It can color what you write. It can change the whole direction of the story. Now, right now, it hasn't changed the direction of my story yet. Um, but it has it has informed it a little bit. So when I get to a little later part of the book where these other facets start to come out, I'll have this little bit of information sort of tucked away in the back of my mind and I uh, may pull it out or uh, it may lead me to research still other things. So that's why we do that. Okay, don't forget, buy my book, Three Shots Fired from Cinderella Castle. And keep your eye out this Black Friday. You'll see the very first sales of alligators in shades of green.